How can my diet affect my polycystic ovary syndrome? Should I be eating more or less carbs? And which supplements should I consider taking? In today's video, I will run you through a snapshot of the key diet and lifestyle factors that may affect PCOS symptoms. However, if you are interested in a video where I explore the research more thoroughly and take a true deep dive into the role that our diet plays in PCOS symptoms, then just let me know in the comment below. And um, feel free to DM me with any further questions around the topic as well that I could include in a potential longer video. So while there is no cure for PCOS, the treatment usually involves a mix of medications and lifestyle changes. Due to the hormonal imbalance, we often see women developing insulin resistance. Now this means that their body finds it more difficult to use insulin to break down and move glucose in our bodies. Insulin resistance increases your risk of type 2 diabetes and research has shown that indeed women with PCOS are more at risk of developing type 2 diabetes and other chronic conditions such as heart disease. Thankfully, diet changes are shown to both help improve the symptoms of PCOS and manage some of the consequences of weight gain and insulin resistance. And while most women with PCOS that come to me look to improve their diet to help manage fertility concerns, to be honest, all women with PCOS would benefit from making some small dietary changes due to the increased risk for heart disease and type 2 diabetes. So as I said earlier today, I will give you guys a brief snapshot of some of the key diet and lifestyle changes that research has shown may help us manage PCOS symptoms. So first of all, looking at the role of weight loss on PCOS. Studies show that if you are overweight, even a small amount of weight loss can help regulate blood sugar levels, normalize menstrual cycles, and improve fertility. Gradual weight loss of five to 10% of your body weight is shown to have benefits. And normally we suggest aiming for about one to two pounds a week of weight loss. So that is about half a kilo to a kilo of weight loss a week. Now in all fairness, it is unclear exactly what the best way is to lose weight because this is a very individual journey, isn't it? It's incredibly important that you find something or find a way to lose weight that fits in with your tastes and your lifestyle. However, we do know that increasing your physical activity levels and making changes to your diet that reduce your energy intake while continuing to include all the key nutrients can help both improve PCOS symptoms and assist with weight loss. So next, looking at the popular topic of looking at glycemic index when it comes to PCOS. The glycemic index, also known as GI, is a way to rank foods by how quickly your blood sugar levels rise after eating them. So low GI foods result in a slower rise in blood sugars than high GI foods. Studies show that choosing to eat more low GI foods can be helpful to manage PCOS symptoms because it can help to improve your body's ability to regulate insulin. So low GI foods include mostly whole grain carbohydrates, such as your brown bread, pasta, brown rice, dairy, fruits, and veg. Now high GI foods include some of the more refined carbs, such as white bread, sugar, and other processed sweet foods. So just to be clear guys, a low GI diet does not mean low carb. It simply means swapping some of the higher GI foods for lower GI foods, which tends to be healthy eating recommendations really for most of our population. And just another quick interesting point on this is that while it might sound odd, studies do show that a lower GI diet, so eating less sugar, may even help to curb sugar cravings in women with PCOS. So another important aspect to consider when it comes to PCOS and diet is to eat regularly. Eating regular meals may again help to regulate those all important insulin levels. So eat regularly throughout the day and try to plan your meals and snacks in advance to avoid getting caught out. Honoring your hunger or fullness levels is also an important aspect of this. Becoming more aware of your satiety cues can reduce your risk of overeating and binging. And interestingly enough, one study has also shown that breakfast is actually a meal best not to skip. Women with PCOS who ate a big breakfast in this study showed a decrease in insulin resistance. Now, another important eating point when it comes to PCOS is to eat a balanced diet. Including foods from all the key shelves of the food pyramid is useful when both trying to lose weight and making sure you get the balance of nutrients. Include plenty of fruit and veg, whole grain carbs, some low fat dairy, maybe some lean meats and fish and ve or veggie proteins, whichever you prefer. And aim to reduce your intake of some of those higher processed foods, the high fat, high sugar foods. Including a balance of nutrients is especially important, by the way, if you are trying to conceive. So another important point to consider is to watch your fats. So while fats are an essential component of your diet, we do recommend that you choose foods lower in fat, especially in saturated fat. And this is because the risk of developing heart disease is higher in women with PCOS. Reduce your intake of foods containing animal fats, such as processed meats, pastries, cakes, and full fat dairy, and increase some foods higher in unsaturated fats, such as oily fish, nuts, and seeds. Now, another hype in the world of PCOS and diets is the anti-inflammatory diet. Women with PCOS are shown to have higher levels of inflammatory markers than women without PCOS. 
While commercial anti-inflammatory diets make it look incredibly complex to reduce inflammation levels, and they often quote the need for expensive teas and shakes, studies have shown that inflammatory diets do not have to be all that complicated. In one study, 100 overweight women with PCOS were encouraged to eat a diet that included plenty of fiber-rich foods, such as veggies, fruits, and legumes, fish, whole grains, and low-fat dairy, and they were asked to reduce their intake of meat, poultry, and added sugars. The study showed a reduction in inflammatory markers of up to 35%. And then the DASH diet, which stands for Dietary Approaches to Stop Hypertension, is a diet often used to help manage high blood pressure. But interestingly, this diet also showed positive effects on inflammatory markers in women with PCOS. And then looking at the role of supplements in PCOS, because there is ongoing research into various nutritional supplements that may improve fertility, general health, and symptom management. Now, some of the supplements that have shown potentially beneficial results include N-acetylcysteine, inositol, fish oils, vitamin B12, cinnamon, alpha lipoic acid, and vitamin D. Now, as I'm really trying to keep this video short and snappy, I cannot go into the details of each of these, but definitely let me know in the comments below if you're interested on a video with more detail. Oh, and by the way, as these supplements may not be suitable for all women and may interact with certain medication, do get in touch with your GP and dietitian before you start them. And touching briefly on other lifestyle factors, because lastly, research has also shown the benefits of other lifestyle factors on PCOS. So these include increasing your physical activity levels, keeping an eye on your stress levels and quitting smoking. But because I'm a dietitian, these are somewhat outside of my scope to discuss today. So then to summarize my PCOS snapshot recommendations, number one, weight loss may improve symptoms for women with PCOS who are overweight. Number two, focus on eating more low GI foods. Number three, aim to eat regularly to regulate your insulin levels. Number four, eat a balance of nutrients to keep your body well nourished. Number five, keep an eye on what fats you're eating for a healthy heart. Number six, Increase your fiber rich foods and low fat dairy and decrease your sugar and meat intake to improve the potential anti-inflammatory effects of your diet. So then number seven, check with your doctor and dietitian whether any supplements may be worth considering. And lastly, number eight, alongside your diet, keep an eye on your physical activity, stress and smoking habits. Now, of course, making lifestyle and diet changes can be challenging, but improving your knowledge on where to begin and where to focus your attention is a great first start. However, if you'd like to learn more about exactly how these tips fit into your lifestyle and how you can maintain motivation to power through the challenging first weeks and months, then seeing a dietitian can be very valuable for a woman with PCOS. If you have PCOS and you would like to see how your diet can improve your symptoms, then get in touch with me via DM or via a link in my bio. I still have several slots available in my virtual one-to-one -one clinic, and I would love to help empower you to make the changes that are shown to improve your PCOS symptoms. Thanks so much for watching guys. And as I said earlier, do let me know down there if you'd like a more thorough video on this topic. I'd also love to hear your feedback and always of course appreciate a little like, follow or a positive comment. I will see you again in two weeks time. Bye.